The untold secret behind the Russia-Ukraine conflict is that this is part of a broader energy war. Europe and NATO are desperate to end their dependence on natural gas from Russia, while Russia is desperate to maintain its near monopoly on natural gas in Eastern Europe via the largely state-owned Gazprom. Russia supplies 30% of Europe's natural gas and 66% of that travels via pipelines which run through Ukraine. Russia also supplies 35% of Europe's oil. The fact that Ukraine's former government led by President Yanukovych had agreed a trade deal to economically integrate with Russia instead of the EU, which it rejected, would have deepened the EU and NATO's energy dependence on Russia. Which is one of the primary reasons why the West contrived this revolt. And now we've had that confirmed via release documents proving that US aid, which is a front for the State Department, the National Endowment for Democracy and other NGOs funded the very protest groups that began the occupation of Kiev back in November. Over the past two years, energy giants such as Chevron, Exxon and Royal Dutch Shell had started exploration for new natural gas fields in western Ukraine as well as other Eastern European countries. And they discovered huge new natural gas fields in western Ukraine and Poland. But they couldn't get the go-ahead to finalise these deals because Putin was leaning on Yanukovych via this trade deal. Now post-coup, post-overthrow, those barriers are gone and the deals are ready to be signed with the new pro-EU post-coup Ukrainian government. This threatens Gazprom's energy monopoly in the region, which was already under stress from the development of five trans-Mediterranean pipelines from Libya, Algeria and Morocco to southern Europe. Obviously, if new natural gas sources are established in western Ukraine by the likes of Chevron, Exxon and Royal Dutch Shell, with a pro-EU government in power, that dramatically reduces Europe's dependence, their reliance on natural gas coming from Russia. Which is why Moscow is now attempting to commence a counter-revolution beginning with its occupation of Crimea. The occupation of Crimea is about setting the precedent for eastern Ukraine and ensuring Russian control. Because three of the four major gas pipelines run through eastern Ukraine from Russia. Domestically speaking, Putin also needs stable and elevated hydrocarbon prices to fund the state budget and pay for all the new weapons Moscow is acquiring. If he loses control over that, Russia becomes far more vulnerable to NATO encirclement in a geopolitical context. So, Moscow is already following through on this. Reuters reported today, Putin says Gazprom to scrap gas price discount for Ukraine. The previous discount enjoyed by Yanukovych's administration is coming to an end because the new post-coup government is not paying its bills on time to Gazprom. And of course, yesterday it was reported that Gazprom threatened to disrupt gas supplies to Europe as a result of the political turmoil in Ukraine. Talk of sanctions and reprisals by both Barack Obama, John Kerry and top Russian officials are likely hot air because at, l at least in the short term Europe is dependent on Russia and Russia is dependent on exporting natural gas to Europe. So you're probably not going to see any significant or crippling sanctions as Kerry said, it looks like it's mostly hot air. But what you are likely to see is a de facto partition, a balkanization of East and West Ukraine, because neither army is strong enough to outmaneuver the other. And then the spat will likely return to the question, to the political battle of who controls the puppet government in Kiev, the West or Russia, with the poor Ukrainian people stuck in the middle of this geopolitical tug of war. So to summarise, 
at around the same time or shortly before this deal was signed between Ukraine and Russia rejecting the EU, energy giants had discovered large natural gas fields in western Ukraine and were waiting to sign the deal to exploit those gas fields, which would have reduced and eventually eliminated Europe's energy dependence on Russia. Russia, of course, did not want to accept this. They want Gazprom to maintain the near monopoly because if NATO and the EU become energy independent from Russia, it will be a lot easier to follow through on NATO's agenda of encircling Russia with military bases. So that's the true untold story behind the Ukraine-Russian conflict. It's an energy war based around gas pipelines. I'm Paul Joseph Watson reporting for InfoWars.com.